So maybe you're looking for some microphone cable connectors or some panel mount style connectors for your platform or wherever you need them. And you're kind of confused by all the different brands, all the different options out there. One simple rule, if you just stay with Nutrik, you can't go wrong. Uh, they have a variety out there. And to be honest, I really love these little NC3 FPP connectors. One, they're really affordable. Two, they don't have those annoying little latches. Why don't I like latches? Because the people helping on stage plugging in things or taking things out, they're gonna forget to, to press the little button to unlock the connector. And that just kills the microphone cable when you get a big yank on it and it's locked in there. Now, there could be cases where you really, really want that microphone locked in there. It could be uh, something that you really need for your situation. But for mine, I usually don't like that. Another thing you might find is such a large variety of these microphone uh, cable connectors. NC3 MXX or the NC3 FXX, which is just the other side. So this is the F version for female. The other one is the male. That's the only difference there. Now you'll also see different models uh, and it's kind of confusing, but basically if you want the black versions, you just pay like a dollar more and you get a, a black color one, which is, looks kind of cool, but I don't know if it's worth the extra price if you're making a whole bunch of these things. Uh, it's really unnecessary. It's exact same quality, exact same thing. Um, now, you, there's some other brands out there that are pretty good, like Switchcraft. This is a Switchcraft connector, and you can just feel it's really heavy duty. I think it's even heavier duty feel, at least, than Nutrik. But I have heard that people have said that once in a great while, they've seen one that's gone bad which is a rare occasion, but they have never seen a Nutrik connector gone bad. Could be that there's someone out there, please give it a comment if you've seen a Nutrik connector go bad. The only thing I've ever heard of happening on a Nutrik is that they roll something really heavy over it, maybe they drive over it, and it bends the whole entire thing a little bit lopsided, like it gets a little bit of an oval instead of a circle. That's basically the only thing I've ever heard gone wrong. So what's so important about the Nutrik connectors besides lasting a long time? I think something that's really important is the tolerances. I think you can see that the tolerances on, on these Nutri connectors are really good. When you plug in a microphone or if you plug it into a panel mount connection, it just feels right. It, it goes in correctly, it locks correctly. Um, and again, Switchcraft, another good brand. Uh, you try this connector, put it in the microphone, it feels excellent. Uh, it's not ripping apart the connector because it's too tight, for instance and it's not too loose either. Here, let's try out this Chinese connector here. Uh, let's see how that fit feels. And I'm having to jam that thing in there. I, I, I literally can't push it hard enough to get that there. It finally locked. Now, those tolerances don't feel good to me. I can imagine it damaging maybe the microphone. I could see it damaging maybe the panel mounts on the, on the stage or platform. And one thing, Nutrik doesn't offer their own branded Nutrik fully made microphone cables. So what you find yourself doing is you need to buy the Nutrik connectors by themselves and then buy a microphone cable. Now microphone cable, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's kind of confusing, but you know, it seems like the most affordable one I find is the uh, Redco cable. It's uh, the Redco microphone balanced cable. And I think it's called the Low Z1, L-O-Z1 Redco cable. It's pretty affordable. It's only like 26 cents a foot if you buy a nice big spool of like 300 feet. And um, you can assemble basically your own little cables. So you just need a soldering iron, some, uh, some solder compound, and, and you kind of watch a couple YouTube videos. I don't, I'm not that great at it, so you're better off watching some of those other videos on how to so, uh, solder an XLR cable, but basically you can save a bundle. I mean, talk about 26 cents a foot. You can make a nice 10 foot uh, XLR audio cable with Nutrik connectors for maybe eight bucks. It's pretty cool. So, and if you need a great big long cable or custom size cables, uh, you can just keep going with that. Some tips I've seen online for doing these microphone cables is to use a little bit of heat shrink. And I find that the one fourth inch or the 5 sixteenths of an inch uh, heat shrink tubing is a nice size to put on the microphone cable. And what you can do is you can put that heat shrink tubing at the end. So when you're, when you're gonna solder that end on, you're, you're gonna prepare the end, 
you put a little heat shrink tubing on that very end of the cable where it really gets a lot of abuse and it kind of makes it stronger. I feel like I could get away with a cheaper cable by having this, this end strengthened with the heat shrink tubing. Now again, if you're going for long distance in an area with lots of RF noise, you might need a little bit better cable, but I still feel that the Redco Low LOZ1 cable would probably uh, do the trick for you. Um, and there's other stuff out there. Sometimes it's hit and miss. Sometimes you see some not so great quality stuff on Amazon and eBay, but you just kind of pick through all that stuff. You might want to find a name brand that other people recommend on the forums. Um, another thing, don't be getting a plastic uh, thing to mount your panel mount XLR connectors on. They'll break in a month. What you, and, and, and you know what's something annoying is online, you'll find these pre-made metal panel mount connectors, but $5 just for the simple plate that's drilled for an XLR plug. If you get these little plate, uh, blank steel plates at Home Depot, you can spend like a dollar or two. So you can actually just drill these things out with a 24 millimeter drill bit and a few little holes for the screws. So hopefully these little tips and tricks on XLR and microphone cables helps you out.